If Freedom Fails. We'd like to take you in a visit to a town that doesn't exist. A town we call Springfield, USA. We'd like to show you how things would be in any American town if communism took over. This is the story of the enslavement of a group of labor unions and of the way in which this was done. The title, The Union Killer. That's it. Where does it stop? Right at the front of the platform. Come on. Oh, why did he have to come in the midnight train? It's so... Oh, come on, Papa. We've got to meet him properly. Uh, what's, uh, what's his name again? Kerr. Kerr, Papa. But call him Mr. Kerr. Here. This is where the first car always stops. Here it comes. See the headlight? I seem... I seem unable to make his name stick in my mind. Kerr. Perhaps because the whole business is so distasteful. Pop, it's for the good of Springfield. Springfield labor unions have always gotten along without interference from the state capital. Well, the government has the right to oversee union elections. That's none of the state's business. Of course it is, Papa. I've tried to explain a dozen times. Please, this... Diane, no dialectics. I'm tired. Confused. Yes, that too. The idea of sending this communist party man down... It's time the party sent someone to teach the union leaders how... Now remember, Mr. Kerr. In all my ten years as chairman of the Springfield Trade Union Council, I never thought I'd see the day when the state capital would send someone down to dictate to... Papa, you mustn't say that. The state... That's Mr. Kerr. Mm-hmm. It is Mr. Kerr. Father, yes. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Kerr. Uh, we are happy to... Oh, my daughter, Diane Hunter. She acts as my secretary, too. How do you do, sir? Do we have transport? Yes, sir. Uh, this way, Mr. Kerr. I suppose you've come down because of the approaching union elections in Springfield. And because of the possibility of a labor strike, if certain candidates win. I refer to the present leaders. Hmm, But there's no talk of a strike in Springfield. Well, my information is otherwise. Your major unions are... I tell you, there's no talk... Your major unions are... Uh, glass workers. I was president till I retired. Machinists, woodworkers, chemical, teamsters. The big five. The smaller unions follow their lead. You are the chairman of the City Trade Union Council, correct? Yes, Mr. And you know that under the State Labor Code, you may be removed by the State Labor Commissariat, which I represent. I, uh, oh, yes, I know. Mm-hmm. But about the union elections, Mr. Kerr, there will be, in no sense, a strike vote. Really? Uh, what Papa means is that the elections are just for union officers. You see, practically all the Springfield unions hold elections at the same time. The present union officers who are running for office again do say that the right to strike is a fundamental right of labor. Correct? Yes, but I... They do say so, correct? Yes, sir, they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is our car. Mm-hmm. When are the elections to be held? Uh, nomination meetings are in three weeks. And elections are following me. But uh, they're only ordinary union elections. The situation is clear. There must be no election of officers who are not responsive to the production plan of the Communist Party. But free local union elections are fundamental. Hunter. What percentage of your local industry is government-owned here? Oh, about 85 percent. Have you ever heard of the five-year plan? Why, of course. And remember it. We in Soviet America live, eat, and breathe by that plan. Of course. All industry must function to fulfill that plan. It is sabotage to endanger the plan. Correct, Miss Hunter. And to strike is sabotage. But surely... I will require an office. There's one next to Papa in the Union Hall. And a secretary. Oh, all right. But I'll be glad to act as you... Very good, Miss Hunter. I'll be there at nine. And Hunter... I want you to stay as close to your office during the next four weeks as you can. There's work to be done. Trade union work. You see, Mr. Kerr, your office gets the morning sun and it faces Park Square. Mm -hmm. And your father's office? Through that door on the right. The union hall? Through the one on the left. Uh, Would you like to see it? Later. Let's get to work. Yes, sir. Now, here's a list of 23 offices to be called. Yes, sir. Call the number indicated. Say, today is Tuesday. But it's Wednesday. Miss Hunter, you will follow orders without deviation or question. Yes, sir. Then you will simply say, Mr. Carr is here, and hang up. Clear? Yes, sir. And the name is pronounced Carr. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Make those calls in the order indicated. 
secret police, Communist Party headquarters, and so on and so on. Clear? Yes, sir. You will say no more. Yes, sir. And no less. Yes, Mr. Carr. Uh, oh, Papa. Uh, Hunter? Uh, yes, Mr. Kerr. Papa, it's Carr. Uh, yes, Mr. Carr. Good morning, sir. Sit down. I have a few questions. First, the bylaws of the big five unions all provide for secret elections. Hunter, I'm asking you a question. Oh, sorry, sir. Sorry. I didn't realize you were asking. Do they? Yes. Secret ballots. Like ordinary municipal and state elections. And the vote on nominations? Is open, sir. Both nominating speeches and the vote. The vote is by a show of hands. Uh, but, Mr. Carr, I don't think Springfield will spoil its strike rate. Now then, what are the reasons for the labor unrest here in Springfield? Uh, I hoped we'd get down to cases, Mr. Carr. Now, understand, there's no talk of a strike, but the unions have tried to bargain in good faith with the plant managers and have gotten nowhere. Speed up is killing the men's health. The hours are being stretched without overtime pay. The men are being punished for absenteeism as though staying away from work was a common crime. It is. I beg your pardon? Do I have to repeat my lecture of last night? Just because Springfield has met its production quarters in the past is no reason to think that they'll be allowed to fall behind now. We are producing more Wouldn't now than... old line labor men never learn that wages and hours are no longer the measure of correct working conditions? Correct. Don't I make myself clear? But how are we to judge working conditions except by wages and hours and the treatment that the worker gets from the plant manager? All right. Let me repeat. The function of a trade union is to aid the Communist Party to carry out the plan of production under such hours and such wages and such working conditions and such punishments as may be necessary to secure the fulfillment of the plan. But how can I conscientiously... Hunter, what is your salary as chairman of the Trade Union Council? Well, it's only... Yes, when's your term up? In two years. Provided you are not removed by the state labor commissariat. Yes, that's correct, according to the state labor code. You will make yourself available to me at all times. Yes, sir. At all times. Yes, sir. Today is Tuesday. Mr. Carr is here. That was the last call, sir. Miss Hunter, I was surprised to learn that your father is not a party member. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. But I am. I'm recording secretary of the Young Conrad I Committee. I had your... And I'm a candidate for the Communist Party itself. Miss Hunter, I'm trying to tell you that I know all that. I had your party status carefully checked last night. Oh, well, I thought... Yes, I'm merely trying to get your opinion of your father. I think his failure to join the party is to be condemned. I think it's despicable. I think that he should join the party. Well, perhaps your opinion is strong enough for you to be trusted. I'm a good party member, sir. Fine. Then let's get to work. Get me the local chief of secret police. Yes, sir. And have the following connections ready for me. Chairman of the Springfield Party. Director of Propaganda of the Party. Editor of the Springfield News. He's the same man. That's fine. Also the director of the local radio station here. Yes, sir. Mr. Carr calling the chief of secret police. Also the mayor, the chairman of the board of aldermen, also the head of the Young Communist League. Did you get all those? Yes, sir. Good. Hello. One moment, please. The police, sir. Your number one line. Right. Code word. Monday follows Tuesday. Correct. Now, for immediate action. Complete dossiers on the chiefs of all the following unions. Machinists, woodworkers, chemical, glass, and teamsters. Everything. Political history, moral delinquencies, religious bias, criminal record. For secondary action, dossiers on chiefs of all other Springfield Union locals. Clear? Also, dossiers on all relatives to the second degree. Clear? Correct. Next, Miss Hunter. The chairman of the party local is waiting on number two, sir. Fine. Carr here. The assignment concerns trade union matters. You will immediately mobilize all party forces for propaganda and direct action activity. I will address a meeting of all cell leaders and shock workers tonight at your headquarters at 8 p.m. sharp. It is of special importance that all party members with particular influence in Springfield trade unions attend. I want also to point out that this task is of first priority and will take precedence over all other assignments. Clear? Correct. Edited Springfield News on number three. Miss Carr. Prepare for my signature, requisitions for extra newsprint and other necessary supplies and labor for a four-week period. Right. Rough copy in connection with local trade union matters will be supplied to you for your personal attention. In addition, you will be at my office, trade union building, tomorrow night, 8 p.m., for detailed instructions. Clear? Correct. Director Station WSPR waiting. No, I'm sorry. This is Carr. You will reserve sufficient Class A airtime during the next four weeks to give trade union matters a minimum of three hours daily. Three hours. Cancel all other commitments if necessary. You will be at my office, trade union building, 
Tomorrow night at 8 p.m. for detailed instructions. Clear? Correct. <laughs> Young Communist League, this is Carr. Clear? Correct. Board of Aldermen, this is Carr. Clear? Correct. Mayor's office, this is Carr. Clear? Correct. Very efficient, Miss Hutter. There's a place for you in the Communist Party. Thank you, sir. I hope... Yes. Mr. Carr. Yes, Hutter. I, uh, I didn't mean to give the impression before that... that I oppose... Yes. That I am at all unreliable. Go on. That I cannot be relied upon to cooperate. Good. Come on in, then. You and probably Miss Hunter can help me on our next move. Now, tell me, of the big five unions, which is the most powerful? The Teamsters. Well, not quite the biggest, but the most aggressive. Why? Because of its leader, O'Malley. Party member? No. Why not? Unreliable. What's he like? Strong, obstinate. But a reasonable man. Intelligent? Oh, yes. Shrewd, you mean. Experience. Pre-revolutionary experience. All right, I understand. Miss Hunter, set up an appointment. I'll see him first. After all, O'Malley, I'm only proposing a procedure that's common throughout the country. It's not common to Springfield, never has been. I hope never will be. Well, what's your objection to open voting at union elections? It's not secret. Well, let's get to the point, shall we? That is the point. A man's entitled to keep his vote to himself. Pre-revolutionary theory. Well, so far as I'm concerned, the coming elections are going to be secret. That's the American tradition. All right. Let's take the American tradition. What's happened to the tradition of speaking your mind? Of letting the world know where you stand? Of saying your piece out loud? What's the difference between talking straight out in the open and voting straight out in the open? The difference is that if the membership of my union votes in the open... They lay themselves open to retaliation. Now, you misunderstand me, O'Malley. As a representative of the labor commissariat, I'm the last one to want to see that happen. My only interest is to avoid any strike which will endanger production. Production's the thing that concerns me. And working conditions concern me. Well, I suggest open voting only because you want to win better conditions from the plant managers. Show them your labor solidarity openly. Don't you realize what a voice vote means at a mass rally and what it can do to persuade the managers that labor's just demands ought to be satisfied? It will be an open, fearless demonstration of strength by open vote. The answer is still no. You'll change your mind. I'm sure I won't. I'm sure you will. I uh, found your appraisal of O'Malley unfortunately correct. Miss Hunter. Carl Ebert isn't as pig-headed. Ebert is the head of the glass workers. Yes, sir. And he'll probably be early for his appointment. Mr. Ebert. Mm-hmm. Come in, Ebert. Mr. Carr? Yes, sir. Well, Ebert, come in. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Hunter, make a record of our conversation. Yes, sir. Huh? Oh, just for the record, Ebert. Nothing official. See, by the way, have you been in touch with O'Malley since last week when I saw him? Uh, uh yes. Yes, of course. Well, then you know generally what I want to talk about here. Uh, Let me state my position in case Mr. O'Malley didn't make it clear. Now, my only job is to avert the possibility of any strikes in Springfield. Now, that would be bad for your union and for our production plan, wouldn't it? My idea is to avert even the possibility of a strike by a demonstration of solidarity here. A tremendous voice vote at mass rallies by the various unions. But, uh, as O'Malley said, an open vote lays the men now, open... Mr. Ebert... American working men afraid to speak out? Really, now. Americans afraid to stand up and be counted? What about our great American tradition of saying your piece out loud? I didn't think of it in quite that way. Yes, and I'm sure Mr. O'Malley didn't put it that way. No. Let me ask you, Mr. Ebert. What's the difference between talking straight out loud in the good old American way and in voting out loud? Huh. You certainly make it sound different than O'Malley does. But, uh, Mr. Carr, uh, I think in this I must agree with the others. What others? Well, O'Malley spoke to me and Jenkins of the machine. Anyone else? Yes, and uh, Gilchrist of the woodworkers. I see. You all went along with O'Malley? Uh, yes, Mr. Carr. 
But uh, I don't want you to think that any of us want to slow down on the state plan. Oh, that's the last thing we want yes, to do. Yes, and the last thing the labor commissariat wants to do is to trample on the desires of the local union organizations. You're absolutely right, Hebert. It would be better to leave the voting procedure as it always has been, secret. Oh, I'm very glad. But uh, did O'Malley tell you that he wants to change the nominating procedure? Change it? No, he said nothing about that. Do you think it needs changing? Of course not. Well, he wants to make the vote at the nomination meeting secret. Well, he didn't even mention that to me. Well, perhaps O'Malley isn't telling you everything. But why should O'Malley... Why shouldn't he trust you, yeah? Well, no, I... Uh, you are against any such change in the nominating procedure? Of course. I see no reason for change. Especially since O'Malley didn't see fit to take me into his confidence. Did he tell Jenkins or Gilchrist? Well, I'm sure he didn't. Now, listen, if I were you, I'd check with Jenkins. He's head of the machine, as you say, and with Gilchrist to make certain that O'Malley isn't trying to put something over on all of you. The very... You are listening to The Union Killer, a story of the way things could be if communism took over. A picture of what life would be like under a communist regime in an ordinary American town. A town we call Springfield, USA. The chairman of the Young Communist League on the line, Mr. Carr. This is Carr. I've been here two weeks and I've not seen any action worthy of the Young Communist League from you. You are the Young Communist League, aren't you? Then I expect the following. Identify O'Malley with strike action. O'Malley wants strike action. A vote for O'Malley is a vote for a strike. O'Malley is your primary target. Others will follow. The following organizations will participate. Parent teachers, the Springfield Agricultural Collective, student bodies of Springfield College, high schools and elementary schools. All sports organizations will cooperate. All cultural societies will volunteer. The writers, painters, musicians, guilds will be pointedly invited. Everyone. The slogan will be, forward the five-year plan. Chairman of the party is waiting on number two, Mr. Carr. Thank you. This is Carr here. I'm not satisfied with your campaign. The Springfield News does not carry enough anti-O'Malley copy. Now look, tear down his character. I've given you the material. Use it. Build Ebert up. Play him off against O'Malley. And use the front page, not the inside. Did you learn nothing at propaganda school? Same criticism for WSPR. Hammer the message that O'Malley and his gang are pro-strike and that they don't give a tinker's damn for the five-year plan. O'Malley is pro-strike. You got that? Repeat it and repeat it and repeat it now. Point two. Your union infiltration is pitifully, and I say pitifully, inadequate. Have you learned nothing or have you forgotten everything? Till now, comrade, I have thought that only the head of the Young Communist League needed replacing, but believe me, comrades, you're even more dispensable. Now, follow these orders without deviation. During the next two weeks, you will introduce into each of the big five unions enough party members to accomplish the following. First, to educate a majority of the union membership to the necessity of nominating only anti-O'Malley, anti-Ebert, anti-Jenkins, anti-Gilchrist, and anti-Meany candidates. None of these men or their supporters must be nominated. And if nominated, they must not be elected. Second, the party workers will observe and report the names of all union members who vote for the nomination of those men and their sympathizers. Clear? Correct. Stupid farmer. Miss Hunter, isn't Meany of the chemical workers supposed to be in here this morning? Yes, in ten minutes, sir. And Gilchrist of the woodworkers this afternoon or two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mr. Carr. Yes? Yeah? You said, well, before on the telephone, that party members were to report how the membership voted. Well, isn't the vote in each union by secret ballot? Of course it is. Well, that is, the vote which will elect or defeat O'Malley, for example, as president of the Teamsters. That'll be secret. Well, then, how can you observe who... Miss Hunter, think. Well, I, I don't see All how right, you... now, look. Let's take O'Malley again. Two, three, possibly four other men besides O'Malley want to be president of the Teamsters Union, correct? Mm-hmm. But the present bylaws provide that there shall be no more than three nominees for each office. And the vote to choose the three nominees... Will be open. Exactly. Just as provided for in the present bylaws. And those who disclose by their open vote that they wish to nominate an unreliable candidate will be observed. Correct. And uh, 
besides your wife, Gilchrist? Well, uh, three children, Mr. Carter, two boys and a girl. Oh, really? How old? Well, the boy's almost ready for college. Mr. Carr, speaking of my boys and my daughter and my wife, too. Yes, what about them? Well, there uh, seems to have been some inquiries made at school about my boys and daughter, and uh, yeah, the uh, the secretary of the parent-teachers group was questioned about my wife. Really? My brother-in-law, he's a party member. He was questioned closely about me. Well, come on. What's the point, Gilchrist? What's the point? Well, sir, that, uh, that's never happened before. And I, oh, I well, perhaps that, uh, this is just an inquiry concerning your credit. Oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is different. The, the questions are unusual, you know. They're, they're my personal history, political, religious, my family, and, and my wife's, too. Is that so? Mr. Carr, has this inquiry got anything to do with the strike situation? Yes. But, uh, Gilchrist, I, I, get this through your head. The leadership of the Soviet state is the responsibility of the Communist Party. The Communist Party leads the masses by means of transmission belts. One transmission belt is the trade union, and you, as the head of the woodworkers, will either carry out the orders of the Communist Party or you'll be through. Clear? With my family. Correct. With O'Malley, and Ebert, and Jenkins and Meany. I will tolerate stupidity only so far. Tell me, what kind of men do you use for investigators? Morons, idiots, imbeciles? Or perhaps you delude yourself that you are the director of propaganda and not the chief of secret police. Is an investigation a publicity campaign? Must the whole city know who, when, where, and how you are and what you do? Must the very person under investigation be informed of your every question? All right, now. You can forget Gilchrist. I have him in hand. Clear? Correct. Complete your investigations on Jenkins, Ebert, and Meany. O'Malley? No. We'll handle him otherwise. Clear? Correct. Uh, however, your report on the O'Malley Meany conversation may be very helpful. Uh, Mr. Carr. Yes. Mr. Meany's in the next office waiting. Have him come in. Jenkins and Ebert are with him, and uh, O'Malley, too. I didn't ask them. Well, they're here. All right. Tell them to come in. Did you think you could get away with it, Carr? What's that, O'Malley? With misrepresenting our last conversation? Well, how do you mean? Saying that I want a secret vote on nomination. Well, didn't you say that you... You know I never mentioned it. That is a lie. A lie made to deceive and to double-cross. Who? You? No, your friend, Ebert here. Jenkins, too. Well, that's the real lie. Is it? Yes, it well, is. Well, now, let's just test who's lying. Tell us. Where did you spend last well, Tuesday uh, evening? What's that got? Do you prefer not to answer? Well, no, not at all. Well, come on, then. Well, I... Uh, you were with me, O'Malley. So you are with me. Where? Well, yes, yes, that's right. At, at his office in the chemical workers building. What did you discuss with him? Well, what we would do if and when a strike would ever become necessary. Nothing yes. else, huh? O'Malley, you did suggest the idea of a secret vote at a nomination meeting. So you have this Well, then no, no, not with you, as you told Ebert. No, huh? Well, why didn't you? Well, it, it, it didn't occur to me then. And not I... with Ebert either? Well, I was going And to... not with Jenkins either? Well, I was going to discuss it with everyone. But you didn't with me, did you? Why lie about it, O'Malley? Well, I didn't. O'Malley, why with me and not with me? After all, I am the senior union leader in Springfield... My union was the first. I have a... Well, right. now, Ebert, I... What's the difference? What I want to know is why there's something to do about a secret vote for nomination. We've never done it that way. I'm against it, especially on such short... Well, time. now, you don't understand, Ebert. I... Why? Yes. Haven't I enough experience as a union... Well, leader? that's not what I mean. Well, I... then, what do you mean? Well, Ebert Jenkins, don't you see why a secret vote in the election is not enough? The nomination vote has to be secret, too, so that the men can nominate without fear of retaliation. I'm not convinced that there ought to be any change in our established procedure, O'Malley. Me neither. Then you, too, have noticed the spontaneous demonstrations all over the city, huh? Gentlemen, I think that your general population is more politically advanced than some of your labor leaders here. Mr. Carr has been a very busy man since he arrived. We cannot afford to fly against popular opinion. Well, I know one thing. That working conditions have broken down to the point where something has to be done. The managers won't bargain. We've got to keep leaders in office who are for the unions and against being controlled by the Communist Party. Furthermore, in order to protect the men, the nomination vote has to be secret. And what's more, I don't believe that the so-called spontaneous demonstrations in favor of the five-year plan mean that the people of the city won't be sympathetic with our wage and our demands. Well, 
Sit down, Hunter. Gilchrist, I'm glad you came. Well, Mally, I'm, uh, I'm not too sure the changing procedures for the best at this time. Speaking as chairman of the trade union council, I think that we ought to consider our actions very carefully. Hunter, you weren't talking like that a month ago. What do you mean? Nor you, Gilchrist. I've got a right to change my mind. Yes, you've also got an obligation to your union membership. And I mean all of you. You can't say that I don't always act in accordance. When do you have the right to say that You're I You're a can't. troublemaker, O'Malley, and you want to rule the roost. As I chairman of the trade call. union council, I call this meeting to this order. I meeting call this meeting, meeting to order. Miss Hunter, would you read that back, please? Uh, yes, sir. For the personal attention of the state commissar of labor, on the basis of my observation at Springfield and other cities, I suggest that the secret union ballot be preserved for propaganda effect. Right. Now, add this. Yes, sir. Uh, however, the state labor code should be amended to provide that all voting for nominees who aspire to union office shall be by open voting. By this method, we will be able to observe those who desire the nomination of undesirable candidates and to discipline union members where need be. Come in. Oh, right on time. Come in. Miss Hunter, would you step into your father's office for a few minutes? I'll call you when I need you. Yes, sir. Now, regarding tomorrow's elections, are your police ready? Mally will be removed tonight. Correct. Party observers will be present in sufficient numbers to observe all union voters and will report to me on all pro O'Malley voters. Correct. Very good. But, uh, Mr. Carr, in the event that Meany of the chemical workers, you know, he's strong pro O'Malley. Mm-hmm. He takes over O'Malley's leadership and carries the nominations and then swings the elections against us. What then? Don't worry about that. If persuasion fails, there's always the gun. You have just heard a story of what happens to trade unions under a communist regime. You think this could not happen? It did happen in Russia, where according to the bylaws of the trade unions of the USSR, quote, Soviet trade unions shall conduct all their work under the direction of the Communist Party. It did happen in Poland, where the Communist Party liquidated such democratic trade union leaders as Henrik Ehrlich, Viktor Alter, and Katsima Putsak. It did happen in Romania, where by virtue of law number 52, labor organizations can no longer negotiate labor contracts. This is done for them by federations and confederation of labor, a body controlled by the Communist Party. It did happen in Hungary, where by paragraph 45 of the penal law, a person who has not a definite occupation in his hometown must serve at forced labor at a place to be determined by the authorities. You've been listening to If Freedom Fails, starring Jack Webb's Carr in The Union Killer. Lillian Bayef played the role of Diane, and Cliff Barnett was Tom. Music was composed by Earl Lawrence, with musical direction by Michelle Perrier. The Union Killer was written for If Freedom Failed by Arthur Weiss, produced and directed by Robert M. Young. Sergeant Lloyd Iyer speaking. This program has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Thank <laughs> you.